Hello, football fans, and welcome back to Go Side. Synonym for power and speed, Roberto Carlos established himself as a legendary left back. However, it was a long road to success. Roberto Carlos was born back in 1973 in Sao Paulo. Just like most Brazilians, Roberto grew up in a poor family, and his only freedom outlet was football, which was played all the time, everywhere, in his hometown. However, young Roberto Carlos had to grow up quickly, much quicker than kids of his age from different backgrounds. This led to him starting working in the factory when he was just 12 years old, and it was necessary in order to help his family put food on the table. As it would turn out, Carlos's footballing talent was enormous. His childhood club, Uniao Sao Joao, took notice and signed the then 18-year-old to play for the senior side. Brazil's call-up arrived soon after, even though many were protesting that an unknown 18-year-old would play with the best. However, Carlos's physicality was unmatched in the world of football at the time. Bursts of speed down the left side and one of the strongest right feet made for a spectacular combination. Atletico Mineiro spotted Carlos, but he didn't get the right opportunity there, so he moved to Palmeiras in 1993 when he was just 21. This is where Roberto Carlos really established himself as Palmeiras won two consecutive league titles in Brazil and the left back was ready for a dream career in Europe. Inter Milan came calling and Carlos didn't have to think twice. He went to Europe thus securing his family financially as he earned mind-boggling figures just 11 years after he was working in a factory as a 12-year-old. His time in Serie A didn't go too well, however. Inter's manager at the time, Roy Hodgson, played him as a winger, even though the player himself wanted to stay at the left back. The differences were too big, and Carlos decided to leave Inter at the end of the 1995-96 season. And then, a career move happened for Carlos. Real Madrid spotted his performance in Brazil and Inter, realized he could become the world's best left back and bought him for just $6 million in the summer of 96. It proved to be a jackpot for both the player and the club. Carlos was the key member of the three-time Champions League winning squad as he was the first choice left back in all of 1998, 2000, and 2002 years when Los Blancos conquered Europe. He also helped them win four La Liga titles. Perhaps the most memorable moment and the one Roberto Carlos is most remembered for arrived in 1997, but not at Real Madrid. He played for Brazil as Cariocas was playing in a friendly tournament against France. Brazil earned a free kick in a dangerous area and everyone knew where to look. Roberto Carlos took the ball, made his trademark run towards it, before curling it like nobody until or since then did. The ball went completely to the right side, so much that the ball boy who was standing 10 meters to the right ducked before the ball took a complete swerve back and ended up in France's net. Fabien Barthez, the French goalkeeper at the time, just stood there, shocked as to what he had just witnessed. The goal was so unreal that not even Carlos himself knew how it happened. I have no clue how I scored it. I used to practice my free kicks a lot. I would stay behind in training and hit them in. On this particular occasion, it came off well for me. I just hit it and it went in. Roberto Carlos was a first team regular for Brazil even in 2002 when the Brazilians won the World Cup. Not only did he appear in six matches, but Carlos also scored free kicks against Chile and started in the final against Germany when his best friend Ronaldo Nazario scored past Khan, securing the trophy for Brazil. Just like in the national team, things were going well at Real Madrid. Especially impressive was the 2002-2003 season. Real Madrid were fighting for La Liga with Real Sociedad. They needed a win in the last fixture versus Atletico Bilbao, and it was one-to-one -one as the teams were preparing for the halftime. But then, Roberto Carlos struck. A free kick in the injury time of the first half was all that Carlos needed to bang in for the lead, which would eventually turn into a 3-1 win for Real Madrid and the 29th league title. The next season started in a similar tone, with Real Madrid beating Barcelona in La Liga El Clasico at Camp Nou for the first time in 20 years. Roberto Carlos was the difference maker once again as he scored the opener in a matchup that ended with Madrid's 2-0 win, and Carlos's best friend, Ronaldo, scored the other goal. On the topic of Ronaldo, their friendship was something else. The duo was unstoppable on the pitch together, with Roberto Carlos being the best left back and Ronaldo the best striker in the world at the time. They didn't just share the dressing room in Real Madrid, they were also roommates in the Brazilian national team. Carlos once jokingly said that he slept with Ronaldo more than he did with his wife. I met Ronaldo in 1993 and from that moment we always shared the room. I've slept more times with Ronaldo than my wife. The time at Real Madrid was wild to say the least. World's biggest superstars, Galacticos, all in one dressing room having to adapt their egos to the team. Not only that, but the manager had to do his part too because the players were so powerful that they could take anyone out. Many managers came and went as the wrath of Galacticos got to them. During the Galacticos era, there were seven of us. They created a dangerous situation in the dressing room. We always managed the situation well. We got along well, but Camacho, Real Madrid's manager at the time, didn't, and he only lasted 10 days. He came into the dressing room, said hello to everybody, and was very serious, a man with a lot of history at Real Madrid. Then he said, I want everybody here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. 
We normally train at 10.30. We talked to him to try and get him to change the time. We had our habits. They had their habits indeed. The Brazilians love to party. They weren't just any parties either. It's almost a miracle how Roberto Carlos managed to play 584 matches for Real Madrid, basically never getting injured, all while drinking and partying heavily during most of that period. Carlos's partying off the pitch did, however, leave traces in his private life. After having three kids with his first wife, the separation didn't hit him hard. He had four more kids with various relationships before finally settling down with his current wife in 2009. Again, his off-the-pitch issues never affected Carlos's performances, which led him to become the foreign player with the most La Liga appearances for Real Madrid in the club's long history, as he played 370 games in the league for Los Blancos. When he wasn't bombing down the left for Real Madrid, he was playing for Brazil, including the World Cup 2006, which would prove to be his last. Brazil were knocked out by Zidane-led France in the quarterfinals, and the blame was on Carlos, who didn't mark Thierry Henry well on the conceding goal. With Carlos coming from the country where football is everything, the pressure was too much. In 2007, it looked like his time with Real Madrid would be finished soon, too. He made a mistake right at the beginning of the knockout tie against Bayern Munich, which led his son Salidi Hamidic to assist Roy McKay for the quickest goal in the Champions League history. This goal would prove to be crucial for Bayern knocking out Real Madrid of the Champions League, and all fingers pointed at Carlos, very similar to the Brazil situation. Once again, being the soldier of the club that he was, Roberto Carlos announced that he would leave the club at the end of the season, soon after his blunder against Bayern. Even though he had multiple offers at the time, Roberto Carlos decided to secure the bag and move to Fenerbahce, who paid well just to bring the legendary Brazilian to the club. The fans went crazy, and thousands of them arrived at his presentation to the Turkish club. Carlos would go on to provide mixed performances before finally leaving the club two years later after 65 appearances for them. After spending 15 years in European football, Roberto Carlos decided to go home. He joined Corinthians, and guess who else was there too? That's right, Ronaldo. Carlos still produced moments of magic, scoring directly from a corner kick and providing spark in certain moments. But after his club were knocked out from the Copa Libertadores, the fans threatened him. And that's serious in Brazil. Carlos subsequently departed from the club. The next club proved to be everything Corinthians was not. Anzi Makatawachala was the big money Russian project, which gave Roberto Carlos 10 mil for two seasons there. He played well, taking the project seriously and even becoming the captain at some point. For his 38th birthday, Carlos received an unusual gift from the billionaire club owner, a brand new Bugatti. Carlos was the owner's favorite, and everything Carlos wanted, he got basically. However, after his contract expired, Carlos announced his retirement from football. Even though he retired from the on-the-pitch activities, Carlos still wanted to remain in football. Thus, he became Anzi's caretaker manager, only for a brief spell. His managerial career didn't see any success and isn't even worth mentioning in the context of this giant. He ended it by managing Delhi Dynamos and leaving the club in 2016, thus putting the lock on his managerial career. Off the pitch, you could easily say he was very irresponsible. He managed to throw away all of his wealth, resulting in jail time in 2017 because he couldn't pay child support for one of his former girlfriends who gave birth to his two children. However, he quickly found his feet as he became an ambassador of multiple brands worldwide because people still recognize his face as Carlos represents an era in football that many refer to as the Golden Age. A brave, determined player and a legend, Roberto Carlos revolutionized the left-back position throughout his playing career. Before him, the fullbacks were usually the worst players on the team, with the only purpose to provide runs up and down the pitch and defend. Carlos changed that completely. He poised an attacking threat like no other, scored free kicks at will, and held on to the highest level for more than 10 years in the elite game of football. Danny Alves, Marcelo, Macon, and many other fullbacks nowadays were inspired by Carlos's magic by the touchline, and who knows how football would look like today if we didn't get this master of the ball. It's true that, just like on the pitch, Roberto Carlos couldn't contain himself off of it either, resulting in a tough life after ending his career. But the truth remains that we were all privileged to watch Roberto Carlos scoring from impossible angles, scoring unseen free kicks, dribbling from the left back, and just providing entertainment like only a few before and after him did.